We get a Britt Baker Riho video package, which amuses me because it's about to happen. You know, I always laugh and they do a video package. It's not even like it's later in the show, stick around for a main event. It's, it's happening right now, but here's a video package for it first. So it's Britt Baker versus Riho, and here's the deal. The wrestling in this match was tremendous. The actual execution of athletic maneuvers and, and, and exchanges of holds and whatnot was fantastic. The problem is that was like half the match, and the other half was just constant non-stop, repetitive interference from uh, Jamie Hayter and Rebel to the point where it's silly and annoying. And uh, there's a table has gotten, but uh, that got countered. And so there's a point in the second half where Riho is going to the top row for a foot stomp. Rebel pulls Brit to the apron and lays on top of her. And so Riho foot stomps Rebel right in the ass. <laughs> Just Safe, safest place she could have done it. To be I suppose so, but it's that was so too bad too because she did a dive off the post and Rebel did the greatest catch I've ever seen. Yeah, maybe in my life actually. I'd have to go back and think of a more perfect catch. Just a high cross and she caught her like a baby and fell down. It was, it was absolutely it was Rebel of all people with this yeah. perfect catch on. Well, uh, Rio's Rio. about 87 pounds. Well, sure, but I mean I've seen a lot of small people get missed completely. During these catching gimmicks by way more than one person, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there's lots more interference. There's just random belts in the ring, and JR is as irritated by all this bullshit as, as I am. And finally, Rebel is ejected, which leads to basically nothing. Uh, Jamie is still out there. She and Britt are having a discussion, and Riho bonks them together. Nearly wins because it's a near fall out of that, but then uh, Britt hits a curb stomp, which Riho kicks out of, but it's not enough to help her escape Lockjaw. And Britt finally wins. There was too much interference in this match, but the one thing that I will say about it is that because there was so much interference that when they built to the last couple of moments and, you know, the heels are taken out and and uh, uh, Rebel has been ejected and Britt is yelling at Jamie, and everybody knows that they've been having problems, and, you know, Britt walked out of her on Wednesday, that as soon as Riho grabbed and distracted Britt and hit that Northern Lights suplex, this fucking place went crazy. They thought for sure that this was going to be a title change. And going into the match, I mean, honestly, who thought that Riho was going to beat Britt Baker? Nobody. And, you know, they even told the story that Britt Baker had never beaten Riho in her life, which I think is supposed to make you think that Rio's going to win, but when they push it that hard, you just know she's not going to do it tonight. Yeah. But I thought that they bought, they bought that uh, Northern Lights suplex, and then uh, they pop big for the curb stomp and the lockjaw. So I thought this match was really, really good. And yeah, too much interference, but they're trying to tell a story here. And the interference actually did work to convince the fans that they were going to see a title change, which I don't think you would have gotten that without that. The the interference that was on this show and the the show the the day before um, terrified me because I think that means uh, Rebel is going to be wrestling again soon. Ooh, that's never a good idea. Right. The one thing I would say about all this is that this was the very first battle of the belts which I think they want to be their Clash of the Champions. We started off as mega shows for, I don't know, a half dozen of them or so, maybe a little mm -hmm. more. <laughs> but this in no way felt like... I really liked the opener, and the wrestling in the main event was very good, but it never I don't know, it felt like a mega show. It felt right. like an extra no, episode of Dynamite. It felt like... Actually, it didn't even feel like that, Vinny. It felt like another Rampage. All right. Because the key is it was only an hour. Yeah. Like, if they would have had two hours, and they could have done, say, four title matches... And everyone gets a little more time, et cetera, et cetera. Then I think this would have felt like a special event. Saturday night, two hours free TBS, as it was, especially coming off, you know, Rampage and Dynamite, you know, all their preemptions and everything like that. It, it honestly felt like it's a glorified Rampage with more championship matches on another day. It didn't feel like a big time TBS, Clash of the Champions type deal. And I don't think it's possible for it to feel like that in an hour. I think it's got to be two hours if they want it to really. But it's not their call. That's well, TBS's call. Especially in the shadow of a Dynamite that had a long world title match and a tag team title match and a TBS title match all in that show. That was a much bigger show than this Battle of the Belts. Yes. Not, not to mention one of the belts that was battled for was the FTW title. And yeah, that doesn't even count. It's, no. It's like the million dollar title. Right. 
But it's a belt, brother. I Damn. suppose it is. Maybe they can I mean, fight over Cody's weight belt next time. It's no. the same thing. It's a belt. The fans will throw it back. No, him and another wrestler. Like Sammy goes, God damn it, my back hurts. I'd really like a fucking weight belt with a with a skull on it and, and an American trunks. flag. Cody goes, all right, fucker, well, I'll fight you for it. If you can beat me, I'll help yeah. alleviate your lower back pain. Exactly, exactly. You know, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> no, I hadn't either. That's a new one. Well, I did. Yes, you did. I'm always thinking of bad ideas. Yes, you are. It is Wrestling Observer Live today. I'm Oreo the Orca. Do you have a blowhole rating system? Like, if you're really excited about a match, it gives you yeah, six scores. This match was was uh, two and three quarter holes, if you must know. So I was watching this show, and they had a bunch of videos for this Liv Morgan about how, oh, my whole life I've been a wrestling fan. Oh, I'm going to win my first title ever. There's children cheering and going, oh, ho, ho. you know what I'm saying? Okay. I do indeed. <laughs> hey, Danhausen, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear Danhausen? Hey, look at that, holy hey. mother of God, look what we've done here. You broke a leg, is that true? Uh, it was broken in half, snapped in two. The doctor said it was a tibia and a fibia. Uh, I'm a whale and not a doctor, but is it not a fibula and not a fibia? A fibula? What I know. Perhaps what? the doctor lied to Danhausen. You know, Danhausen, if you were a whale, you wouldn't have broken your leg. This is true because whales don't have legs. What did you grow up watching as a little evil man? Kane ripping off the door when he debuted. Yes. How old were you, Dan Helsen, when that match took place? Oh, about, uh, what was that, 1997, so about 700 years old. Oh. Also, one time Dan Helsen had Dolph Ziggler's theme song as his alarm and it went off in class. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yes, it's true. Dan Helsen likes Dolph Ziggler. You like Dolph Ziggler? He's good matches. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.